Learning to Walk by Faith, Part 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Hebrews 11, verse 6, and Romans 1, verse 17. Second Corinthians 5, verse 7. We live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith. We live by faith. We live by faith. We live by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, verse 6, why? Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yes, we can please others, maybe through church activities, but God is only pleased by faith. We can please others by our prayer, but God is pleased by our faith. We can please others maybe even by fasting, but God is pleased by our faith. We can please maybe others by our offering, but God is pleased by our faith. And God says without faith, a prayer without faith is nothing to him. A fasting without faith is nothing to him. May we seek always to please God, Basarani, by living by faith and not try to impress others. But let us just make it our standard of living. I shall live on this earth as a righteous man or woman, as a child, as a young person. I shall live by faith. I shall live by faith and not by sight. Romans 1 verse 17. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The righteous shall live by faith. When we live by faith, we are acknowledging that we are righteous. When we live by faith, we are in other words, saying, Lord, I believe that you have made me righteous. And then we act according to our belief, which is faith, by living according to who we are. Because I am the righteousness of God, because God has made me righteous. Therefore, I will live as a righteous man or as a righteous woman. How does a righteous man or righteous woman live? He or she lives by faith. I shall live by faith, not by sight. Romans 1 verse 25. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. Yes. Yes. By not trusting God, you are exchanging the truth for a lie. When you don't live by faith, you are exchanging the truth of God for a lie. When we don't believe what God has said or what God has done, we influence people to believe lies about our God. When we say, I am destroyed, I am perishing, we are giving testimony to the enemy. Because God said he will take care, he will never leave us, nor forsake us. But when you say, I am so much devastated, I am so much alone, I am confused, you are giving weight to the lies of the enemy. And though you believe in God, but you are influencing God that just as you believe in God, you are telling others that 
Yes, I believe in God, but God is not taking care of me. So therefore, I will live according to what is happening around me. And we are taking, we are robbing God of the testimony. We make God to be a liar. The God who says, I am the good shepherd, is more like a liar when we say, I am confused. I don't even know what to do. You make God a liar. Because God said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. But when you live in the fear of harm, in fear of danger every time, you are saying, yes, I believe in God, but I don't trust him enough to live in faith of what he is saying. It is so frightening that when you don't believe God or his testimony about Jesus, you are more like in a court witnessing against God and telling everybody God is a liar. You empower the testimony of Satan. If God is this side and Satan is this side in a court and the judge is here, when you don't believe in God, you are standing by the liar, the devil. And you empower the testimony of Satan against the God you say you believe in. You are saying, no, God is not faithful. I will ever remain like this. And the enemy says, yes, God never does anything. Do you see after praying all these prayers, do you see you are still the same? And then you stand by the enemy and say, oh yes, nothing has really changed. And God says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I have lifted my weight above my name. You shall see good days in your life. But the enemy says, tell me, are you feeling anything right now? And then you stand by the witness of the enemy and say, I don't feel any change. I don't feel it. And by so doing, you are telling everybody attending this court that God is a liar. That God is a liar. May we stand by God this week and bear witness to the truth. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Not my government, not my job, not my business. My God shall. He shall. Let the enemy stand alone in the courts and let him invite devils and demons to witness for him, not you. Not you. Not you. Remember, faith must be a way of life, not a way of getting things. God is not more. Galatians 6 verse 7, you find those words. God is not mocked. God cannot be mocked. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man receive, receives or reaps what he has sown. When you sow words of faith, you shall reap the harvest. God is not mocked. We cannot use a thoughtsy language to steal from God. We cannot come to God with good words, scripture, verses to claim, yet our lives do not relate to what we are claiming from him. God is not mocked. 
attempts of living by faith for certain condition causes you to try hard. You try certain declarations, you try certain statements, you copy and paste some declarations. Do you know what? When you are trying, you get tired. Because the copy and paste declarations become a burden. And because you use it just to turn the corner, and then you come to say, this thing is not working. Why? Because you are trying an activity for a certain condition instead of engaging to live by faith, not simply by declarations. Live by faith. This should be our daily life. Do I have my child? Let us look at this clip. Look at the child. Oh, Gosiam. Falling and rising. But what is happening? This child is learning to walk. <laughs> Learning to walk. Learning to walk. <laughs> Learning to walk. So what is this here that we see? This child is not saying, in order for me to get food, let me try to walk. But he says, I must try, learn to walk. Because walking is a way of life. Because although I cannot reach there now, I may fall as I try, but eventually I will get there. Because it's a way of life. I don't try to order myself and try to walk in order to reach my food. But I walk so that I live by walking. At times I may fall, but I will rise again. Eh? In my first steps of walking by faith, I am likely to fall, but never count me out because I am learning to walk by faith. I am learning to walk by faith. I am learning to walk by faith. That is why in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, the scripture says, when I was a child, when I was a child. You must have your own when I was, Bazalwan. In the walk of faith, you must have your own when I was. When Pastor Mashaba preached about the new men, I realized that I must learn to live according to who I am. When he said he is never sick, I say, therefore, I must go and learn and not try to copy what he is saying. I must learn to walk and live by faith. I must learn. Walking by faith demands the following. Probably I will share just one. And then the few points under this one main point and come to the conclusion of our service. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. What does it demand to walk by faith? So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Praise God. Walking by faith demands a proper look at things. Proper look at things. Proper giving proper attention to these things. Faith is not a denial of things. 
Faith is not a denial of things. Faith is not a denial of pain when you are in pain. Faith is not a denial of having no money when you have no money. When you have no money, faith does not say, I have all money. Because sinni get paid. Faith does not deny things. That is why the scripture says, we do not look at things. We do not look at things. We do not look at things. This means that things exist. This means the pain is there. The brokenness is there. But faith says, I'm not looking at you. We do not look at things. Faith does not say it is not there, but faith says you are not going to influence my direction. You are not going to influence my language. You are not going to influence my position, my setup. You are not going to influence what I do. I remember Pastor Matebula, when I go to shop at times, I usually think, do I push the big trolley when I'm going to buy one loaf of bread? Or I take the small basket? Because Pastor Matabula said, whatever he's going to buy, even if it's a fruits, he pushes the big trolley. Because in his spirit, he is filling the trolley with fruits. not looking at the things that are there. I may have only 50 emanangeni for this fruit, but I am pushing a trolley that is carrying a grocery for 5,000 emanangeni. So I will keep pushing this trolley until one day it is filled with a grocery of 5,000 emanangeni. Do you see at times that the things that we see, they tend to influence what we do? You are always influenced with your five family. You buy ice cream, you are saying, I got it. Not bad. I'm just making an example. You always look for the ice cream by the door at the shop. Even when you have sufficient money, you know that you forget. You'll always buy, go by the door. <laughs> Filling up my cup, my sister. Even when you can buy a five liter that day, because you have occupied your mind with five emanangeli ice cream. You will never realize, even when God has restored the years that have been eaten by the locusts, you'll never see it. That is why this may not be trying to push you into possessions, but they are important for illustrations. That is why. Try also to look, this may not be faith, but try to look also a new car. When you look at garage, aga zbanbal, you are born. You see those garages. And almost all the time you look for the broken ones because they are cheap. You say, I my fools. You always look at the cars that you can repair. You can repair and drive. Go to BMW, cars on wheels. Oh, this one. 
How much? Again, shale kuyong ife. Just taste. Give yourself a taste. Even if you have one lilangeni, it's not a crime. They will not arrest you just for sitting. Just for sitting. Go by the shops. Go and look around the shops. Woolworth, Truett, Jed, Sales House. Just go in. Take the trouser or skirt and go into the fitting room. Can I fit it? I'm telling you, you will never be arrested. You always go. I'm sorry for those who are selling those clothes, Bazalwani, not Kabi. But you always, you have set yourself the standard, the limit. You are always looking. Go, oh, what ten? <laughs> you have set the limit in your mind. You don't set your eyes on things that are seen. But you set your eyes on things that are not seen to the naked eye. Calling things that are not as though they are. Calling things that are not as though they are. When the airplane is flying over your house, don't expect sweets to drop. Please bring me some sweets. Say, one day I will own you. You will land here. Yeah. Calling the things that are not as though they are. As though they are. As though they are. Uh, I don't know if it was, um, I was challenging my faith. I don't know. Obenglala. When I saw the advert on the newspaper, they were saying there would be flights between Eswatini, Deben, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Zimbabwe. And I said, I'll be one of the first ones to, to be there to take this flight. Do you know what happened? I was invited to speak in the official launch prayer for this occasion on the 5th or 3rd of March this year. And when I was there, guess what? They gave me a gift, two tickets, free. They said you can go anywhere with whosoever. <laughs> So as you see me, there are two tickets. But <laughs> the ticket is only for flying there and coming back, not getting into the hotel. So you can come into that space. But all I am saying, all I am saying, make it more like a game not to live by sight, not to live out of what you have. Live out of what God, the owner of heaven and earth, has. Don't have faith on things, have faith in God. Don't have faith on things, have faith in God. Don't have faith on things, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Do not deny the existence of things. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, let me write so that we come to a close. In the midst of fear, keep telling yourself the unseen. When you see fear, when you see things that are sending a message of fear to you, keep saying the unseen. The unseen is what the Lord says in 1 John 4, verse 18, 2 Timothy 1, 7. The spirit of power. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power and the spirit of love and a sound mind. When you feel confused, 
God has not given me a spirit of confusion, but a sound mind. Yes. Learn to live by faith. In Romans 10, verse 17, we know faith comes by what? By hearing. Even when you hear yourself. <laughs> Even by hearing yourself. Faith comes. Faith comes. Tell yourself and those closer. Don't tell everybody, Kumbula. Don't tell everyone. But tell yourself. And maybe those closer to you who may be praying with you, not those who are waiting for you to stumble and fall, because they will say, this thing is not going to work. But tell those who will say, don't worry. I know it's your first steps in faith. You shall soon be running. Your muscles of faith are being strengthened. Because God said, the righteous shall live by faith. Shall live by faith. Shall live by faith. That is why when you read about that woman, I think in all the gospel, I took note in Mark 5, verse 28. The woman with an issue of blood. I think what I'm taking on the most is the fact that she kept saying to herself, not to others, but she kept saying to herself, be loaded with what you are saying to yourself other than what the environment is saying to yourself. Load yourself with truth so that you keep saying, it's Monday, it's sunny, no rain, keep saying to yourself. You don't feel it. You see no change, but keep on saying to yourself. You hear no difference. You are not called for scholarship. You are not called for a job. You are not promised anything good. Keep saying to yourself. Keep saying. When nobody is saying it to yourself, keep saying it to yourself. Keep saying it to yourself. I know the plans I have for you. Keep saying to yourself. Keep saying to yourself. By his stripes I am healed. Keep saying to yourself. Keep saying to yourself. With this scripture, as you keep saying to yourself, there are footsteps here that I would like you to listen. If fear is standing by here, can somebody run, please? Come fear. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Amto. If fear is standing by so near and listen to these footsteps, these are footsteps of love. This is what is happening. Let me explain it to you. Please start all over again. When fear has been your partner, has been near to you, and as the footsteps of love and power sound closer and closer, when you know there is no fear in love, when you know God has not given me the spirit of love, of, of fear, fear gets away, disappears as the footsteps of love. When you speak the volume of love to yourself, I am loved dearly by God. I am the son, I am the daughter of the Most High God. I have inheritance. I am a child who belongs to the kingdom of righteousness. The steps of fear fade away as the volume of the sound of love increases. And you become free because you shall know the truth and the truth sets you free. The truth sets you free. As you go today, be as a grade one child. Long ago, Gozi now school starts so early. 
But long ago, I know by experience. Ah, uh, ah, eh, eh, bangan man. Oh, oh. Say it again. Ah, uh, without any shame. They keep repeating it. Nam ngatana na apobazalwa. But today you'll be shocked if you find me. Oh. Uh, e, oh, <laughs> Why? I have passed those grades. But how did I get here? I started by repeating. Ah, A, E, O. Keep on saying it until it is part of you. Until you pass that grade. Until you are promoted. Until you are elevated. Keep saying it. Don't mock God. Don't just say it because you want to rush to grade two. Say it until it becomes part of you. Until it becomes part of you. Uh, when you go to the filling station and the attendees attend to you. Uh, part of what happens, I may not know everything and every time, but part of what happens when you say, please fill my car with 500 emanangin, they are able to set the limit of your money somewhere, they press something, and then they put in the pump. And when it gets to the 500, it stops automatically. Why? The limit has been set. Can you set the limit every day? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Set your limit. Set your limit. Don't let the conditions set the limit for you. Rise up, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Don't let the devil set the limits. Set your limit yourself. This day I shall rejoice. This day is one of the good days in my life. I am setting the limit for myself. Start off by not looking at the things that are seen but look at the things that are not seen. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we stand up, please, as I lead you in this portion? Can I have that house, Banele? The last picture. Thank you, Jesus. As you increase the sound of truth, engage yourself with truth for life, not for situations. Live by the truth. Be a disciple of truth. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you engage with truth, you will believe. Believing is mostly saying as the Lord is saying it. But faith is acting according to what you are believing. As you engage with truth, as you inject every vein and every muscle and all the thoughts that come to your mind, as you inject yourself with truth, as you immerse yourself with truth like a sponge, truth shall come out of you in every situation. And the truth shall set you free. As you sound the truth, you keep saying it to yourself. 
as the steps of truth sound louder and louder. The paralyzing fear, the abnormal fear of animals, fear of insects, fear of dogs, fear of water, fear of heights, fear of darkness, fear of storms, fear of going through tunnels, fear of small spaces and escalators shall become history. Shall become history. Shall become history. This house is an illustration that once upon a time somebody occupied this house. But as you see it now, the person who once lived with his furniture occupying this house, when you see it now, that person is no more. The occupants are no more living there. May the fears that had enjoyed party in your life become history. And may the truth bring down those walls, that house, where the demons enjoying party filling you with the fear. Fear of what tomorrow holds. Fear of relationships. Fear of sicknesses and diseases. Fear of being closed in a small space where you feel like you lose your breath when you are in an escalator. May it become like those walls. May it be broken down like that house. But you need to feed yourself with truth until the structures of fear are broken down. Thank you, Jesus. I can assure you right now that if you will occupy yourself with this truth, it may be in the next hour or next day or next week or next month. But this is my assurance. Fears shall become history to you. You will enjoy what you feared the most. You will walk where you least expected to walk and you shall do what you least expected of you. You will have what you never thought you can have. Things that have become history in your life shall become a present because truth is loaded with power to set you free. As you walk out today, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I cannot ask you to exceed our expectations. That is where you operate. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Lord. From today onwards, we shall look up for testimonies. We look up for testimonies that say, I have been set free. What I feared eating, I can now enjoy. I used to fear flying, but now I can fly. Oh God, I feared higher positions, but now I've been elevated. I've been promoted. I feared death, but now death has lost its power on me. I can fear death with a smile because I know I have life beyond death, beyond the grave. I feared trying what I had always been losing, but now I'm carrying a smile over what I've been losing. The battle has been won. I feared occupying new things in my life. 
but now I have something new. Oh, glory to Jesus. I fear that my wedding, my, my marriage is breaking up, but Lord, thank you, I'm living in abundance now. I feared losing my children into drugs, alcohol, and all these things, but Lord, thank you, I have conquered my fears. I feared that I will never have a job. I fear that I will never have a good business. But I have been set free. I have been set free. The house of fear has been destroyed. Fear has gone. Fear has become history. The fear of escalators and small spaces is gone. I can live anywhere in any room. Fears of darkness. Oh God. I used to fear darkness, but I have been set free. I can now stay in a dark house without any fear. Fears of animals, fears of dogs, fears of insects. I have been set free. Fears of thunder and lightning. Fears of storm have been set free. Oh Lord, I pray that the spirit of the Lord be upon each one of your sons and daughters. So that when we go out of this storm, we don't look at the things that we shall see. But we look at the things that we cannot see. That the things that we see shall never ever influence the direction of our lives. And that they will never direct the influence or influence our confession. So that by faith we can say we live and not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. Let us give him our praise. Let us give him our praise.